Hello, it is 1DM here, and today I'm going to ask a pretty fundamental question about Pathfinder 2E's mechanics. Which is a better defense, dexterity or constitution? Obviously, the answer is that you need both stats. They're each used for their own types of saving throw between reflex and fortitude, both of which are about equal in importance. Dexterity affects your armor class, while constitution increases your maximum hit points. Both are important defensive stats. But if you have to pick between the two, which is better? This might seem like a pretty basic question. But to answer it in detail, we're going to need a pretty detailed analysis and a good chunk of math. That's right, folks. This is another math video. To start this comparison, let's assume a basic scenario. Your character has to choose between a boost to constitution or dexterity. Each stat is either below 18 or an odd number above 18, so that applying a boost will increase your modifier. Remember, boosts to stats over 18 only increase them by 1. Let's also assume that your current dexterity modifier is lower than your armor's dex cap, so boosting it would increase your AC. But that's all we need to assume. From here on, I'll be comparing the two by leaving all other variables free. At this point, it's important that I spell out a concept that might not be very intuitive. Take a character with 100 hit points. If a creature hits them for an average of 10 damage, it will take 10 hits to down them. If the character gains 10 maximum hit points, it will take the same attacker 11 hits at 10 average damage to down them, a 10% increase. If the character instead reduces their average damage taken by 10%, they'll now be hit for 9 damage on average. It will take the attacker 11.11 hits to down them. This is an 11.11% increase. I'll call that number the Increase in Effective Hit Points, or EHP. Reducing your damage taken by X% percent increases your effective hit points by 1 over 1 minus X. So a 10% reduction increases effective hit points by 11.1%. A 20% reduction gives a 25% increase or a 50% reduction has doubled your EHP. For the rest of the video, I'll be concerned with this question. How much does an increase to dexterity increase your effective hit points? And is that more than constitution? So now we get to the crunchy part. How does an increase to dexterity affect your EHP? To find this, I'm going to use table 2-9 from the Game Mastery Guide giving strike attack bonuses for monsters. I'll compare these attacks to possible armor values for player characters to find how much damage would be reduced by having plus one to their AC. At this point, I must acknowledge that my code is far more complicated than it had to be. It's honestly pretty silly how much faster I could have done this, but regardless, I got results. For characters of middling AC versus creatures of their level with moderate attack bonuses, plus one to AC will generally give 11 to 13% more EHP. It's less effective the higher the enemy's attack bonuses. The percentage varies by a couple points for characters of low or high AC. Low AC characters actually get less benefit, more like 9-10%. to High AC characters' benefits are a bit more erratic, but similar to or higher than moderate AC characters. I'd compare to creatures of further variance in level and attack bonus, but to be honest, the numbers get less consistent, and it's pretty hard to draw useful conclusions. But we do have some very useful information here. Plus 1 AC will increase EHP by 11% as a very rough ballpark. AC increases are less effective when your AC is low or the enemy's attack modifier is high. AC increases are more effective against weaker enemies or for higher AC characters. This is a key realization. AC increases are better the more of them you have. But what about constitution? This is a less complex calculation, but still takes some thought. The effective HP increase you get from increasing your constitution modifier is equal to your level divided by your current hit points. For example, a level 10 character with 140 hit points would gain 10 hit points from a constitution boost, an increase of about 7%. That's pretty simple. So, to answer the question of how much EHP you gain from constitution, we just have to know your level and how many hit points you already have. Like AC, hit points will vary by level, but we can create a reasonable set of values by taking values between the lowest and highest possible hit point totals. We then simply divide the level by the value and get our EHP increase from a con boost. What we can see very clearly is that lower HP characters gain a larger benefit from boost to con percentage-wise. This is intuitively pretty obvious, but we can see here how dramatic it is. Characters in the bottom half of the chart, which is where almost all martial characters will be, never get better than a 7% EHP increase. Characters in the top half will be casters or maybe squishy or marshals like rogues or magi, and could get an 11 to 13% increase. These numbers are a bit lower than the EHP increases we saw for AC previously, except for low HP characters. It's very important to note, though, that increasing your maximum hit points 
increases your EHP against all damage. Increasing your AC only increases your EHP against attack rolls against your AC. It doesn't help against effects with saving throws. Figuring out how much damage comes from attacks versus saving throws would be pretty complicated, but anecdotally, attack rolls account for more than half of the damage dealt to characters, maybe 60 to 75%. So it makes sense that the EHP increases from Constitution should be roughly 25 to 40% lower than from AC. In other words, my conclusion here is that the two are extremely well balanced. To be honest, I thought I might have been able to outsmart Paizo this time and find a way in which one stat is by and large better than the other. But no. I don't know if they did the precise math I'm doing here, but they definitely thought about the difference between AC and hit points as defenses. That being said, I can still draw some useful conclusions and leave you with some actionable advice for building your characters. Recall from all this analysis that AC boosts are better for characters with high AC. Con boosts are better for characters with low HP. So a character with high AC and HP is better served by an AC boost. A character with low HP and low AC is better served by a con boost. And which characters will often end up with both low AC and low HP? That's right, casters. The sorcerer, witch, and wizard have the lowest hit points in the game. Alchemist, Bard, Druid, Cleric, Investigator, and Oracle come in a little bit higher. All of these classes, except some Druids, will rely heavily on their decks for AC, and also have the slowest armor proficiency track of any classes. In other words, they're going to end up with pretty low AC for their level. So these classes are the perfect candidates for focusing on Constitution first and Dexterity second. I hope you all enjoyed this deep dive into defenses. I actually have another video planned that's a wider survey of defensive mechanics in Pathfinder 2e. If you have any thoughts on what often gets overlooked as a defense, drop them in the comments and I'll make sure to point them out. If you enjoyed this video, also feel free to like and subscribe or even give me money on Patreon. If you didn't, please let me know in the comments what I could do better or what you'd like to see instead. But this is 1DM out. Have a great day.